So let's take it back to the era of camcorders, just after mini DV camcorders were pretty much discontinued. And if you've been looking for an extremely small professional camcorder that is compatible with XLR, then you might want to check out this little guy here made by Canon. So let's take a look at this surprisingly aged camcorder and see if it still holds up in 2024. <laughs> Welcome back to my camera collection. This here is the Canon XA10, and it records to SD cards. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lois, this is not my Batman glass. SD cards. That's not retro. Yeah, you're right. SD cards technically aren't retro because modern cameras and camcorders still record to SD cards. But this camera is 13 years old. It's kind of weird to think about people who were born when I was in middle school are now teenagers, which is kind of making me feel a little bit old. But back in 2011, you were able to pick this camera up brand new for $2,000, which I think is actually a pretty fair price for it being a professional grade camcorder that is this size. And obviously nowadays, you're not gonna be able to find one of these brand new anymore, but Canon still does make the XA line of cameras. I think they're maybe at the XA65 or the XA70. They also have a consumer line of these cameras and that is the Canon Vixia HF G series and I think they're on the 70 model on that as well. They're pretty much the exact same camera just these ones are compatible with the handle on top and XLR and uh, night vision and all that kind of stuff. Let's take a look at the test footage that comes out of this guy really quick and then we'll talk a little bit more on what I think of it along with going over some of the specs and features on it. So let me know what you think of the footage that comes out of the Canon XA10. So this footage actually looks extremely familiar to me, and that is because I used to own a Canon Vixia HF G40. That camera came out in 2017, I believe. The footage that was from the HF G40 does look extremely similar to this Canon XA10. And to be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of the video footage. Uh, it's just, it looks a little bit weird to me. So in my opinion, it has a weird mix of extremely soft looking footage that's almost fuzzy or blurry. And then on the other side of the spectrum, it has parts of the image that look extremely sharp to where it's almost like a pixely look to it. So you kind of mash those two together and it just looks a little bit weird. The weirdest part to me, and it actually took me a really long time to figure this out, because I noticed it back when I used to use the Canon Vixia HF G40, and that camera had this kind of weird look to it as well. I don't know, the footage kind of has a halation look to it. And if you don't know what halation is, it's kind of this orangey glow that old picture cameras used to have, like uh, film cameras, or even like uh, Super 8 cameras, they'll have a halation to it. And it's always kind of a bit of an, a reddish, orange kind of color, but it's always on something that's kind of overexposed and usually like a white color. It, it's kind of hard to see. You kind of have to really look at the detail, but if there's any part on the video where it's kind of blown out or overexposed, it'll kind of have just this slight little bit of orange glow to it, halation if you will. And it just looks a little weird. And I've looked at other people's test footage out on YouTube of this and 
Everybody else's footage has that same look to it, and it's super weird to me. And the other thing as well is it doesn't pick up white colors very well, in my opinion. So if you have like a, a white car or a white boat or whatever it is, it doesn't show detail very much. It's usually very blown out and you don't see the curvature. It just looks really flat and then you don't see the smudges and the dirt or the scratches or whatever it has going on with it. And so you can't really tell the, the detail on it and it looks just super weird to me. It mostly does it with white colors. So I don't know, that's just something that I noticed with the footage. Let me know if you noticed that as well now that I kind of have brought attention to it or maybe I'm just seeing things. Maybe I'm going crazy, I don't know. <laughs> But it does have 58 millimeter lens threads on it. If you already own a Optica 58 millimeter fisheye lens or a Vallege 58 millimeter fisheye lens, a Century Optics fisheye lens, as long as it's a 58 millimeter, it'll fit on the front of this uh, little camera here. But there is a problem with that. If you want to use the top handle with a 58 millimeter fisheye, you either can't use the fisheye or you either can't use the top handle on it because the uh, the fisheye lens actually hits the bottom of the top handle and the threads don't actually line up to the front of the camera lens. So you either have to take the handle off and then use some form of like a cold shoe handle or use one of those handles that like screw into the bottom, which I don't know, it kind of defeats the whole purpose because you get a record button here up on top and you get a rocker zoom and all that kind of stuff. And it's just nice that it's nice and solid and it's not gonna be bouncy or anything. So my recommendation is if you get one of these cameras and you wanna use it for like skateboarding, get yourself a 52 millimeter fisheye lens. I know Optica and Vallege make a 52 millimeter fisheye lens, and then all you gotta do is just get a 58 to a 52 millimeter step down ring, screw it on the front here, and then you'll be able to attach the 52 millimeter fisheye lens to the front of this. And it should be a smaller diameter than the 58 millimeter. So it should, in theory, hopefully fit underneath the top handle here. That's my recommendation if you want one of these for shooting with a fisheye, for skateboarding, or even any kind of action sports. But behind this lens cover here, you do get a 10X optical zoom, which is pretty small. I for some reason thought that it was a 20X optical zoom. That's probably because every other Canon camcorder that I've ever messed with always has a 20X optical zoom. Kind of weird that it only has a 10. I guess it works. It does have a digital zoom you can use with it, but you know how I feel about digital zoom. It also has a third of an inch CMOS sensor that creates 2,370,000 pixels. And it's actually the same exact sensor that's in the Canon XF105 professional camcorder. If you like the footage from the XF105, then you'd probably enjoy the extremely compact sized version of it. But this camcorder does record in 1080, and that's at 60 frames per second interlaced, 30p and 24p. So I thought it was interesting that uh, it still records in 60i interlaced, which I thought in 2011 that cameras and camcorders were kind of past the interlaced stage. The lens f-stop is a f1.8 to a 2.8. The video format is AVC HD, and I'm pretty sure the modern versions of these, along with the consumer models, still record in AVC HD. And to be honest, I don't really care for AVC HD. Like, it's compatible with everything, I guess, but it seems like every time that I've ever tried to edit with it, I always have something wrong with the files. And it's always something to do with the audio. Either the clip just won't have audio, or the audio won't be synced up with the video. I just, it always has problems. I don't know if there's a way around that. I always have some form of an audio issue with my clips and it's not every single clip. It'll just be sporadically. Either it just won't have audio or it'll have unsynced audio. The video compression on this is MJPEG4 ABC or H264. So this guy works perfectly for YouTube. Now it does have a 0.24 inch LCD viewfinder or a quarter of an inch if you will. And it is a colored viewfinder and it creates 260,000 pixels. And the viewfinder, it only pulls out 
and it doesn't rock up and down. The lens system as well also has optical image stabilization. So it's not digital or electronic. So the whole lens assembly actually moves around in there. But I don't know if it's technically like a five axis gimbal. More modern ones have like five axis gimbals in there where the lens actually moves around by itself. I didn't find any information that specified that. On the left and right sides of the body, you do get your stereo microphone and it is a Dolby digital stereo microphone. Along with that, just behind the lens, you get a nice focus ring here. I'm not sure if you can switch it between manual focus and manual zoom. I believe it's just manual focus. Now, if you have this thing all the way zoomed out as wide as it'll go, the minimum focusing distance is 0.39 inches. So less than half an inch you can get to something and it'll still focus on it. So I think that's actually pretty impressive. Now you get a little port down here and it's actually your AV port slash headphone jack. So you can use it as a AV outsource or you can switch it in the menu and you can have it as your headphone jack. So I think that's uh, kind of cool that it's two in one. Although by this era of camcorders, I don't really see why you would need an AV jack unless maybe you're running a, <clears throat> unless you're running maybe a monitor on top, but this ha also has a HDMI out port. So you would probably end up using a monitor that has HDMI as well. It is a little bit hidden just because uh, everything's black on this camera. It does have a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack here. So you can run a external microphone on this if you want to, and then be able to mount it up here on the cold shoe, or you could even just take the whole entire handle off and still mount it to the cold shoe here where the handle mounts to. But it does need to be a powered microphone. Generally camcorders won't power a microphone. Like this little guy here is a Rode video mic. Yeah, it has to be a self-powered mic. So something that has its own uh, internal battery. And along with that, you do get two XLR microphone inputs here. So you can run two mics here or just one for your shotgun mic if you want. You get the onboard audio, you get an external mic plug-in on the side, the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, and you get XLR audio. Now that is my criteria for a professional camcorder. If you have the three different audio sources that you wanna use, I consider that professional. Now, another thing that I find really cool, you also have uh, two SD card slots here. You can put an SD card in slot A or slot B and use it to record. So if somehow slot A ends up breaking on you or it just won't read a card in that slot, you always have slot B that you can use as like a backup. But another thing you can do is you can put two SD cards in there and you can say if you're filming some form of like a conference or something, if SD card A runs out of memory, it will automatically keep recording on SD card B once the SD card A gets full. So you don't even have to stop recording. It'll just immediately just start recording onto the SD card B. That's super helpful, especially if you're doing extremely long shooting or if you're worried about corrupted files, you can do simultaneous recording on SD card A and B. So you can have two in there and you can get the same clip on two SD cards, just in case one of them has some form of corruption. Once you go to edit it in post, you'll have a backup. And if you somehow run out of memory, on both of those SD cards. This camera does have 64 gigabytes of internal storage on it as well. So you can have two SD cards and 64 gigabytes of internal storage as well. And you can save pictures and video to that. You can record forever onto this little camcorder and you'll never run out. You'll run out of battery life before you run out of storage on it. So as for some of your manual controls, you can manually control your white balance, shutter, focus, iris, and gain. It has a minimum shutter speed of one and two, or a half, and it has a maximum shutter speed of one and 2,000. And you can also choose between 70% and 100% zebra on it. So zebra is always great to have with your cameras and camcorders, so you can properly expose your shots. And this screen here is a 3.5 inch touch LCD screen, and I don't like it. It's not it doesn't seem like it's heat censored like most modern uh, uh, LCD screens are. You kind of have to push on it a little bit, more like a button. So I think it's more pressure censored. If you lightly touch it on the screen, it it's not responsive, so it's pressure censored instead of heat censored. But the LCD screen does create 922,000 pixels. And what it, wow. And whether you like it or not, 
you're gonna have a cold shoe on this camcorder. So if you run the top handle on it, you get a cold shoe right here on top. And if you take the top handle off, there's two screws here on the back, along with a big one right here, and you slide it off the back, well, it slides into another cold shoe. Whether you run the XLR mic handle here on top or not, you're gonna have a cold shoe so you can mount any kind of mic you want to it, uh, monitors if you want, whatever you wanna do with that cold shoe. The world is your oyster. And one last thing that I find great on this camera is it has infrared. So it has night vision. Right here on the front, you have a little infrared light right here. So when you do have it in night vision mode, that's what will illuminate your area, your subject or whatever you want. You can actually choose between a white image or a green image. So if you want it to look like uh, the old school Sony Handycam green camcorder footage, you can as well. Or you can choose white. Now, in my opinion, I like the white better than the green because green just kind of looks, I don't know, just weird in my opinion. It, 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 at least the white just kind of makes it look like it's black and white. So a couple pros and cons with this little camera here. So it has the detachable handle here. You don't have to run the handle if you don't want to. It's really just a like an accessory, if you will. But this is what's gonna control all of your XLR functions along with being able to record from up here and zoom from up here. You can mount your XLR mic up here along with all your cables and everything. You got a cold shoe here on top so you can mount a light or other mics if you want. Monitors, whatever kind of things that you want to use with the cold shoe. And it's also got phantom power. And then you got two XLR ports here as well. So even with the handle on here, it, this camera is extremely small. I mean, this thing only weighs 1.7 pounds. It's extremely light, it's extremely small, and you're not gonna be a big eyesore out in public shooting with it. So if you want like professional style footage or a camera, and you don't wanna be a big eyesore out in public with this big old camera up on this tripod, you want this little tiny camera here, and then you can even take the, the handle off and make it look like it's just a little small, you know, $200 camcorder you got from Walmart. It doesn't look like a professional camcorder, especially when you take the handle off. It just looks like a, you know, a, a simply made camcorder that you could find on Amazon or Walmart if you wanted. People aren't gonna be looking at you being like, hmm, I could steal this from this guy because it looks expensive. Well, people are gonna look at this and be like, eh, that doesn't really look expensive to me. He's just got a shitty little camcorder. And you know, it's, it's extremely portable as well. Like I said, like it's extremely small even with the handle on it. You could get yourself a smaller lens hood than this or even just take the lens hood off. But you could take the XLR mic bracket off as well if you don't plan to use XLR. And you just have the handle and the camcorder. But really you could take the, the handle off and if you're you know outside when it's cold or something you have a coat. Coats always have big pockets. You could put handle in one pocket, camcorder in the other pocket and you can go out and shoot whatever you want. You can throw the handle up on here if you need to to get low shots, and it's just extremely portable. I mean, it's practically pocket-sized. Now, the downside on it is, well, it's small. <laughs> what? You just said that that's a, a, a pro. Well, yeah, it is a pro, but it's also a con. Because it's so small, it's gonna be light. And like I said, it's 1.7 pounds, so the lighter a camera is, the easier it is to make it shaky. Holding this handheld and recording, you're gonna be more prone to shaky footage. Which, I mean, it has the optical image stabilization, but still, with it being so light, it could be a little shaky on the footage. So, I mean, this thing actually might even be small enough to throw on a gimbal if you wanted to, and light enough. If you have a gimbal out there, this little guy might work for you. But I mean, if you're wanting professional grade video with XLR and the top handle and all of the audio capabilities of it, and you're not wanting something that's just super huge and bulky, you want something that's real small, compact, light, just not like an eyesore when you're out shooting in public, you know, if you're wanting to shoot like little short films or documentaries or even skateboarding if you want to. This would be a perfect camcorder for on the go urban skateboarding if you wanted. You don't really have to carry around a, a big backpack to have this camera with you. And you know, if you accidentally leave your SD cards at home, 
that's okay. You still got 64 gigabytes of internal storage that you can use with it. So that's what I really enjoy as well is it's, I don't know, it's just, it, it works with any kind of situation. So let me know what you think of the 13 year old Canon XA10. Is this something that you would use in the modern world? Was this something that you wanted back in the day, but maybe was too expensive to afford? And do you think it's professional and HD features are enough to keep up with the modern world of technology in 2024? And let me know what camera you wanna see reviewed next on this channel. If you wanna buy this camcorder, it will be for sale up on my eBay store as of recording this video. And if you've missed out on snagging this camcorder for yourself, well, these camcorders usually sell for about $500, give or take, on eBay. If you are looking to get one of these, 500 bucks for one, give or take, is a pretty decent price for it, but it's kind of crazy that it's held its value for 13 years. This was $2,000 when it first came out, and they're still holding their price at $500 or so. If you already own one of these for yourself, or one similar to it, I will have links in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links to batteries, chargers, fish eyes, and fish eye accessories. That way you are able to run fish eye with this little camcorder if you want to, along with some other fun accessories that I think will make this camcorder a lot more usable and fun to use. And that'll do it for this video on the Canon XA10. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, and if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe, because we talk about old school HD retro camcorders <laughs> almost on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.